Okay. Okay, uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining. We have a star panel here today. We have uh, a lot of program directors here, a lot of people who have been closely affiliated with ac uh, academic psychiatry um, here. So we, we are hoping that this will be a very fruitful and very useful conversation discussion. And this is an upcoming topic. So we are very thankful to, uh, for Dr. Asif to kind of um, put together this for us. So Fozzy and I will be your moderator, like we will be your moderators for today. We will be fielding questions. We'll be passing those questions on to um, our panelists, our panelists. I will go on and introduce um, some folks from our panel and then uh, Fozzy is gonna go ahead and introduce some folks from our panel, okay? So the first one that I'm going to introduce, Dr. Asif, he is an assistant professor. He's a resident <clears throat> director and he's the director of inpatient adult and geriatric psychiatric services at CMU College of Medicine. And Dr. Asif is also one of the humblest guys that you will ever meet. So I just wanted to put that out there too. And then we have Dr. Emma Damid. We are extremely lucky to have him here with us today. He's an associate professor, uh, vice chair of education and residency program director at Milton S. Hershey Medical Center Penn State College of Medicine. And uh, Dr. Hamid, for him, I will say he is the, like he's the coolest program director that I have known. So he's pretty chilled out, very cool, very laid back, very approachable. So make use of all the wisdom that he has to offer her. And now I will let um, Fazia introduce Dr. Ashraf and Dr. Naveed, and then I'll come to Dr. Han. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, thank you so much, Manal. Uh, and uh, welcome everyone today from Papana uh, to this Im important webinar or in a, on ERA's supplemental application. Um, and first of all, I would like to uh, say, give a huge thank to all of the, from all of the applicants and including me um, to our, this training uh, and mentorship committee of Papana on arranging all these uh, um, webinars and uh, um, all these efforts for applic applicants. And for Manal Khan, um, who is the chair of this uh, training committee, I would like to introduce her also. She's incoming assistant professor of psychiatry at UCLA um, and uh, chair of training and mentorship committee of Papana. And, there, and Dr. Kiran Khalid, she's assistant professor, Virginia Tech Tehran School of Medicine. And uh, she's also co-chair of training and mentorship committee, Papana. Uh, I would also request to uh, uh, all of the attendees to please mute. Please mute yourself. I will request to please mute yourself. Thank you very much. Uh, now I would like to introduce one of our panelists, uh, Dr. Sadiq Naveed. Uh, if you guys call us uh, mentors, then he is mentor of the mentors. <laughs> many of us. He has mentored many of us. He's Associate Professor of Psychiatry, University of Connecticut, uh, and Associate Professor of Psychiatry, Frank H. Natter School of Medicine at uh, Quinnipiac University, Connecticut. And he is also incoming Psychiatry Program Director at ECHN uh, Connecticut. Uh, along with that, he's Clinical Lead Child and Adolescent Inpatient Unit, um, Connecticut. Uh, I, I am pretty confident most of you are in contact with him and know him for all his efforts. Uh, for uh, mentorship and uh, uh, for applicants. And then our next panelist is Dr. Noman Ashraf. He is training program director of psychiatry uh, and uh, training program director of, for addiction medicine fellowship also, and adjunct clinical associate professor of psychiatry at KCU uh, GME Consortium Ozark Center, uh, Joplin, Missouri. And along with that, um, I would like to, in, and then is uh, Dr. Ahmed Rehan Khan. He is Assistant Professor of Psychiatry at Virginia Tech Karelian School of Medicine. So along with all these cool panelists, let, let's start. And uh, I would like to invite Dr. Asif Khan uh, to take over. Thank you, Dr. Narayan and Dr. Khan uh, for the introduction and for giving us an opportunity to talk about this important topic of their supplemental application. 
I will supplement an application uh, if in a second pilot year and uh, if it's the first time psychiatry as a specialty will be participating in it, including some of the specialties which we'll be talking about. The structure of the presentation and the whole session will be a 30 minute talk uh, followed by insights from the panelists for about 20 minutes and then the question and answer session for 20 minutes. What is supplemental application? The supplemental application is offered by AAMC as a part of ongoing efforts to improve the standard MyRS application. The, the uh, uh, supplemental application, as I mentioned, is in its second pilot year. In its first pilot year, only two specialties participated in it, uh, which was, I believe, internal medicine one of them was internal medicine. This year it features new questions which will help the applicant showcase their interest and experience to program. And this information will help the residency program better understand how the applicant's interest and experience align with their program environment, mission, and goals. So keeping some of these basic ideas in mind is how the programs will be viewing this application and we'll dig, dig deeper into each section in the coming slides. The supplemental application is a distinct application. It's separate from your standard MyRS application. It is, again, I mean, online and it has three pertinent sections, past experiences, geographical preferences, and signals. And we'll be talking uh, quite in depth about that. Only emergency medicine and OBGN this year are, are participating in signals only. They are not participating in the past experience um, in the geographical preference. So the rest of the specialties, including psychiatry, is participating in all the three sections. First and foremost, eligibility. I think everybody is eligible to complete the supplemental application. No restriction, there's no fees for this application. And this is the list of the participating specialties for this year, which is total of 16. As of June, uh, according to my kind of uh, AAMC data, about 43,000 applicants were anticipated to participate in the supplemental application. Some basics of the application again, uh, program participation is also optional. That's not required of the program. As of June, uh, the data that I had reviewed, about 95% of psychiatry programs had uh, indicated interest in participating in the supplemental application. But again, it's an optional choice uh, for the programs as well. Some programs that I mentioned may decide or may choose not to participate in supplemental application. And the list of the participating programs should be available in the supplemental I mean, IRS application website um, as of July. All the sections of the supplemental application are optional. The application in itself is optional. The section in itself are also I mean, optional if you were not to choose to complete one section versus the other. And we'll be talking about this in quite detail. No questions are required to submit the supplemental application. Basic uh, and timelines about the supplemental application, some of the deadlines. Uh, the supplemental application was open as of August 1st, 2022, and will be open up until September 16 of 2022, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can submit your application anytime uh, up until September 16. And the deadline for, for registration of an ERAS token to receive an like invitation for supplemental application is September 14. So by this date, at least you should have registered and gotten the token so that you can uh, complete and submit your supplemental application. 
September 16 will be your final deadline for submission. Again, uh, once the application is submitted by September 16, you cannot do any changes to the, I mean, applications once it's submitted. Uh, Your, your supplemental application will be transmitted or be available to the programs uh, on September 28th when the PD workstation opens. So the deadline is September 16th. It will be available to the programs. If you, if you apply to the program by September 28th, it will be available with your standard application. If you apply, let's say you have uh, completed the supplemental application by the deadline of September 16th. And for one reason or the other, you, have, you, you, are, you are applying to the program in October, let's say first week of October. So when you apply your main application, that is when your supplemental application will become available to the programs in that case. <coughs> Uh, timelines, um, we, we briefly touched about the token. Um, you can complete the supplemental application only one time. Once it's submitted, as I mentioned, you cannot make any changes. The responses uh, that you have submitted for supplemental application will be available throughout the mass cycle until the uh, 31st, 2023 to the program. As I indicated in the previous slides, if for one reason or the other, you submit the main application after September um, 28, your supplemental application will be available to the programs when you apply for, uh, or when you submit your main application, the main map error application. Supported browsers for um, AA, MC are Chrome, Firefox, Edge, and Safari. Uh, for optimal performance, they do recommend uh, to avoid Internet Explorer. Try to uh, um, kind of access the app in one browser window at a time. Uh, make sure to verify your ID, WAMC ID. And if it's not correct, contact the support device app at AA mc.org uh, immediately. Please verify your email when you start working on your supplemental or my ERAS application because that email will be the primary contact through which all the information will be shared with you uh, by the WAMC. Again, submission deadline, September 16, 5 p.m. Uh, there is a tab at the end of the application to submit. Once you're ready, proofread everything, uh, confident, then hit the submit application button. Again, you cannot make changes to your supplemental application after you submit. So, since we will be talking about psychiatry as the program specialty at the at the at the specialty, uh, the the psychiatry as a specialty, as I indicated previously, is uh, participating in all the three sections of the supplemental application, including experiences, geographical preferences, and number of signals. Psychiatry as a specialty has determined five signals per applicant. Uh, People uh, or students can also uh, signal home institution and in-person uh, signaling uh, is also allowed um, in the psychiatry as a specialty. So start preparing for submitting or uh, completing your ERAS supplemental application. The main goals or the main concepts are your responses to supplemental application will help the programs to know you, what motivates you, and what you're passionate about. It is to your advantage to be authentic and honest to help ensure that the PDs can effectively evaluate whether you, you will thrive in this program or not. This is how the program will be will be thinking at the whole when they click on that tab for your experiences and other information. So 
the first section of the supplemental application or the important section is past experiences. So what is past experience section? This section is intended to help applicants communicate what is most important or has most affected them and the specific qualities that they will bring to the program. Again, it gives the PDs a more complete picture of all the applicants. The past, the past experience section is divided further into two uh, sub uh, subparts, I would say, or sub uh, categories. And for simplicity, I have uh, kind of included this flow chart. Uh, two of the main uh, subclasses of the past experiences in the in the era of supplemental application are the meaningful, I mean, experiences and impactful experiences. Up to five meaningful experiences uh, can be submitted. <laughs> in your supplemental application. The meaningful experiences further have several tags. For example, you, you have to define what the meaningful experience is, and that comes under the experience type, and I'll, I'll show you the details. You can also tag your experience type uh, with a focus area and the characteristics, and also there will be an option to write a short essay. The impactful experience also will give you an option to write and like I said, which will be a little longer than the meaningful experiences of an essay and we'll be talking about it in the next few slides. So when you hit on the past experiences, uh, you have to mention the position title, the name of the institution and the place that you work in, your start date, your end date approximate, the frequency of participation, whether it's continuous, daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, these are some of the examples that you can sense how, how much will you work in during that experience and then the setting. Like MC has been really uh, focusing on the fact that if you are to choose an experience for, from your main application, make sure you use the same position title and the same in, like institution name to make sure it is aligned with your application and it's easy to read by the reviewing uh, uh, committees of the program. So experience type will be something that after having the experience uh, broken down to what was the title, what was the institution and all these things, the duration, the length of the um, I mean, experience, you'll have several options to choose what kind of, uh, I mean, experience it was, what type of experience it was, was it an educational training, which could include clinical training as clerkship, away rotation, sub-internship, and structured observership. Was it a military service? Was it, uh, being, no. was it being part of a professional institution? Was it, was it any extra, any other extra, curricular activity, a club or a hobby? Was it a research? Was it a teaching or mentorship experience? Was it any volunteer experience or advocacy or any kind of service to um, for, uh, like institution or uh, uh, service to uh, communities and then work? Was it a paid clinical work? Was it a non-clinical uh, work? Was it business uh, in experience and then so on? So a crowded slide, but I wanted to include the basic uh, 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 you know, uh, um, tabs here because this is what you'll be seeing in your application. Uh, you can tag your ex, uh, I mean, past experience, as I mentioned, to a primary focus area, and that could be either a basic science, a clinical science, or translational uh, science, community involvement, outreach, customer, um, and healthcare administration, uh, improving access to healthcare, medical education, music, art, promoting wellness, public health, quality improvement, social justice, and technology. So these are some of the options that you will be seeing in your application of where you want to tag uh, what was the focus of that primary experience. So for 
for the focus tag, choose the one focus area that that described describe that experience for you. Programs do understand that experience may relate to more than one focus area. And you may want to select the focus area that was most important to you about that experience. If there is no focus area related to that experience, so you cannot think of that experiences fitting in, in any focus area, you can leave it blank. And then finally, the meaningful experiences, you can uh, tag uh, key characteristics. Uh, again, choose the most important characteristics that you demonstrated or developed during that experience. Keep in mind that this tag um, is beyond the scientific knowledge, the academics, the experience, the clinical or the healthcare. This is the general characteristic that you may wanna portray that you learn from that experience. And some of the examples are highlighted here, communication, critical thinking, empathy, ethical responsibility, reliability, resilience, teamwork and leadership. It's a very important uh, 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 fact to keep in mind when you're completing that application. Again, uh, moving on to the meaningful experiences uh, uh, um, subset would also give you an option to write a short essay for each and every meaningful experiences that you will be uh, mentioning in your application. Again, the limit is up to five. Uh, in in your in your in your write up, uh, which is uh, which is which is not too long, only three hundred, um, you know, kind of a, like in, like including the space uh, space is only three hundred uh, characters. Uh, you may want to mention why the experience was meaningful and how it it I mean, influenced you. You may want to weave in the focus area that. Uh, or, or, or any uh, 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 tags in the previous uh, uh, slides that you mentioned that pertains to you. This uh, write-up should not describe what you did in the experience or simply list a set of skills that you developed or uh, demonstrated during the experiences. Again, uh, they, they mentioned in every of the document that I have reviewed for this presentation, do not use bullets. It's an essay, okay? And then use the English um, characters only. Guidance for past experience. Again, a summary from uh, most of the database that I have uh, went through. And again, this is uh, the first time that we, uh, 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 I mean, psychiatry as a specialty will be, will be will be a, a participating in it. So most of the information and the training that was available to us, uh, some of the key uh, guidance for the past experience section is again, it should complement the other parts of your application. Ideally, your meaningful experience essays and other in impactful experience essays should not repeat information from your MSPE or noteworthy uh, points in your personal statement. Well, we understand that there may be an overlap in the experience mentioned across the application. Please consider to provide additional insight and emphasis on how these experiences have shaped you of who you are and what, what is important to you. So again, just naming the same thing uh, is not recommended. Reflect on it and tell the program why this experience has made you or felt you or developed you into someone that you want to demonstrate to them and how. This is some of the data from the last uh, um, last year's uh, uh, pilot supplemental application. Most applicants submitted four or five meaningful experiences. Applicants submitted a variety of experiences types, including some experiences that were clinical, and others that were not. Applicants submitted that, I mean, experiences that occurred prior to and during the medical school or even afterwards for that matter. You can submit any experience that is meaningful to you, that's the nutshell. 
in the experience section, another important uh, uh, subcategory is the other impactful experience. This encompasses any challenge or hardships that influenced you in your journey to residency. It is a little longer than the shorter essay for each meaningful experiences, for example, 750 characters, including spaces. This question gives the applicants an opportunity to provide additional information about their background or life experiences that is not captured elsewhere in the app. For example, the information written in this question should not be the same as what is included in your personal statement. That's ideal. Right? Some of the examples um, in this category are family background financial background, community setting, for example, food scarcity, poverty, educational experiences, for example, limited educational opportunities, limited access to advisors or mentors, and other general life circumstances. Programs do not expect all applicants to complete this question. This question may not apply to all the applicants, keep in mind. Okay. This question is intended for applicants who have other impactful experiences like those that are exemplified above. And last year, approximately 30% of applicants did not reply to this question. Again, same caution, do not use bullets. They want you to write an essay. All right, so that was the experience section. Uh, what will be shared with the program? Responses to these past experience questions will be shared with, uh, with the participating programs to which an applicant applies in all participating specialties, except as I previously mentioned, and not pertaining to this audience is like emergency medicine and OBG because they're only uh, participating in segments. So all your responses will be shared with all the with all the programs that you apply. The program will be able to export these data. However, important to know that the programs cannot filter on these data. They will be available as the plus factor for the program. They will not be available to uh, filter on your meaningful experience of your application. So how does the program view the meaningful experiences in a nutshell? The programs consider the meaningful experiences as all together for a more complete picture of an applicant. Meaningful experience and programs view should communicate what is important or has most influenced the applicant. An applicant usually can take an experience to either or both a focus area or a key characteristic. And the program considers these uh, experience types and focus areas and uh, uh, the, like other tags across an applicant's meaningful experiences as a whole and as a set. Some tips for applicants, uh, students who will be completing this section again, the data is um, um, retrieved from WAMC guides, uh, you know, and they usually guide the students and applicants by drafting a complete list of experiences for your standard application. Once, once you're completing your standard application, my, my errors, then you can actually draft a complete list of your experiences from that. Your meaningful, your meaningful experiences may be selected from that list of I mean, experiences, or it could be anything that is not included in your my errors application. Again, the supplemental application allows you to highlight and expand upon these experiences that you mentioned in the standard application if you were to choose the same experience. Reflect and identify an experience that communicate who you are, what you're passionate about, and what is most important to you. Programs are not interested in one type of applicant. They like diversity and variety. Consider your meaningful experiences as a complete set and use them to paint a picture of yourself. And you may tag an experience type, a primary focus area, and any characteristic to each experience. You do not need to tag every experience to a primary focus area as a key aspect or characteristic. Focus your meaningful experiences, say, on why the experience was meaningful and how it impacted you. Show introspection. 
your essay should explain why you choose chose the focus area and the characteristic. So moving on to the next uh, next section of the supplemental application, which is the geographical preferences. Uh, geographical preferences is designed to give applicants an opportunity to communicate their preference or lack of preference for a particular geographical division or a setting. It is further divided into two categories. Again, the geographical division preference and the geographical setting preference. An applicant will be asked to select up to three geographical divisions that they prefer or indicate that they do not have a preference. They will also have an opportunity to explain or write a short essay um, upon, upon their choice or like, you know, uh, why, why, why those areas are preferable to them or why they're not interested or um, geographical divisions are not a preference for them. In the settings uh, preference section, applicants will be asked to indicate a degree of preference for an urban or rural setting or indicate that they do not have a preference. Again, they will have, uh, they will also have an opportunity to explain their preference or lack of preference. Goals for geographical uh, uh, a preference section according to AAMC is it, it will provide a process for sharing the geographical preferences that enhances accuracy and fairness, will help communicate the importance of geography for an applicant, and provide an opportunity to share preferences for regions and location settings. These will be the nine geographical divisions that will be embedded in your application, and you may want to choose up to three divisions of these nine if you prefer to choose a preference. And this is the breakdown of it, and, it's, and it will be available in your application. You'll have another option of, I do not have a division preference, if you prefer or choose to hit that uh, option, uh, you know, and be open to any area to work uh, or to train in. Geographical um, divisions, each of the, the three choices and options, if you choose to select, will give you an option, a text box that you can write a preference essay or, or a note. And again, a shorter note, as, as it indicates, 300 characters only, including spaces about why that particular geographical division is preferable um, uh, for you. or um, why did you want to get trained in that particular location a division? This response will be shared only with the program in that division. For example, if you apply to a program and you pick three uh, separate divisions, for example, let's say for the sake of simplicity, you, uh, you choose the geographical uh, um, category or uh, division of a specific region, then what you write in there and your choice will be portrayed or will be available, will be visible to the program only in the Pacific area region. The rest of the programs will not see that preference. If you choose not to pick any geographical preference, division preference, uh, and you choose, I do not have a preference, again, you may have an opportunity, you will have an opportunity to describe that in a separate text box by writing a short, I mean, essay about why you're open to, I mean, anything and why the division preference is not important for you. This response will be shared with all the programs. For example, any applicant applying to any program, they prefer no geographical division preference, that data, that information would be visible or be seen by all the programs. But if you apply to a specific division area and a program, only that division area and uh, programs will be able to see your your interest. And this gives the applicants a little bit of freedom to choose if they have a preference. 
what will be shared with the programs or how it would, it would appear to the program in general. If an applicant indicated a preference uh, for a program's division, uh, a preference and a short essay will be visible to the program. Uh, if, uh, if an applicant says, I do not have a division preference, there will be no preference and no, um, and no short essay that will be visible. Uh, if an applicant chooses, as I mentioned, preference for another division, not the division that, that this particular program, for example, is reviewing your application, there will be no information displayed. And if uh, they skip the, the section or do not complete the supplemental application, there will be no information that will be displayed. So in the geographical preference uh, uh, a section, there is another uh, a tab or subcategory which is called setting preference. Uh, in this, the applicant will have the ability to indicate the preference for a setting which could be urban or rural. Or, I mean, urban is defined as 50,000 50, population or more, uh, densely populated area, rural or population of 2,500 or less, and sparsely populated area. You'll have these options, uh, for example, to choose in that tab, which will be strong preference for rural, slight preference for rural, no preference, again, uh, slight preference for urban, strong preference for urban, if you choose to pick any one of these. You'll, you will again have an opportunity to describe your setting preference. Again, a short essay, and this response and corresponding essay will be shared with all the programs that you choose, what setting you choose. Um, and uh, if you decide even to not choose any setting, this response will be shared with all the programs. Finally, the final section will be program signals. And um, the concept here is it offers applicants an opportunity to express interest in the residency programs. And applicants will be asked to send signals for each participating specialty to which they intend to apply. The number of available signals vary by specialty. IEM, for example, has seven. Uh, so uh, in psychiatry, uh, the specialty has determined uh, it to be five signals per applicant. Program signals are intended to be used by program as one of many data points in deciding whom to invite to interview. It's not a screening tool for the programs. Do not choose the same program more than once within a specialty. For example, if you are signaling program A, just signal them once. Do not signal them twice or thrice because they will not be able to see and you'll be wasting your signals. All the program will be seeing a yes node to if your signals or not. And I'm gonna share that with you in the next screen. The goals for program signals is to provide a process for sharing genuine interest in a program that enhances again accuracy and um, fairness. And this is how it will be portrayed or shown to the, to the programs. Um, for example, if an applicant signals a program or that one particular program, the program will see a yes. We're not talking about, I mean, kind of OBG, but I included it. Uh, if there's any listener, um, I mean, out there in this group, uh, but the OBG, uh, they have a different signaling uh, 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 categories, gold or uh, silver. It doesn't pertain to psychiatry. So all psychiatry will be seen as yes or no. Yes, I mean, kind of if you apply uh, or um, signal that program. Uh, if you if you signal a different program, and let's see a program, if you signal a program B and the program A is reviewing your application that you did not signal, the, I mean, it will be no information available for program A to see. They would not know. If you skip the section or did not complete the supplemental application, again, there will be no information that will be displayed. Programs will have the ability to export and filter on these data, filter the applications or export this data. So 
in trying to conceptualize and getting all this information about supplemental application, consider uh, some of the data from the 2022 cycle, the first pilot year of the supplemental application. Majority of the applicants used all of the segments provided for each specialty. Applicants consider uh, different factors when selecting a program to signal. For example, the top ones are alignment of the program strengths with career interest, location of the program, and strength of the clinical training. Again, there are several other aspects that the students or applicants considered last year in deciding uh, who to signal, which program to signal. It's a good idea to reflect upon all these and create your list, make sure to reach out to your advisors, your mentors, um, and discuss with them uh, find before um, kind of uh, finalizing the list for which programs you'll be, you'll be signaling. You have five uh, uh, you know, signals allowance in that set, actually. So you can signal five programs, in other words. Tips for, uh, for program signaling, um, you will be asked to select the specialties to which you intend to apply. For each specialty selected, you will be able to select a participating uh, program to signal. And the programs will be listed in alphabetical order. So this final few slides, uh, I wanted to uh, 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 focus on the program perspective and what is an appropriate use for the programs to evaluate and to uh, review this, this data. The programs are advised or the programs will actually not overweigh on these data. This data, the supplemental application is rather being used in the context of the, of the whole application and will be considered as a plus factor. Geographical preferences and program signal information is appropriate for the programs to use in the pre-interview screening. The programs will be, when they will be reviewing the applications, they may use this information for screening and deciding whom to invite to interview. The programs are encourage, advise, or recommend it to not use this preference and signaling informational data uh, for the final rank or the list or the sole preferences. For programs, the signaling indicates interest. It does not indicate qualification. So keep in mind when you're choosing a program, you're portraying your interest. It does not automatically mean you'll be guaranteed you know, a spot or an interview for that matter. Programs also are um, recommended, encouraged to not disclose the identity of an applicant with a geographical preference or signal or asking the applicants whether they have participated in a geographical preference or signals. Disclosing the number of geographical preferences or signals received. As a nutshell, in summary, the program's approach is uh, programs will view the application as a complete set of information. Supplemental application is one part of your entire package, which includes MyARES application, MSP, personal statement, exam performance, letters of recommendation. Information from the supplemental application is one of many sources of data that programs may use in their selection process. The program will use this data again as a plus factor rather than to screen out, to screen out applicants. That brings us to the final slide. Uh, some of the helpful tools and links where you guys can get more information uh, from a student resident perspective uh, are listed here. Uh, I wanted to mention the acknowledgement. Most of this presentation has been prepared uh, uh, through the data available to us on the AMC ERAS application webpage, the supplemental ERAS application guide for programs, and the ERAS PD workstation community. 
Uh, with that, I will end this presentation and um, I wish I mean, everybody the best of luck. Thank you so much, Dr. Khan. That was, um, before we jump into, uh, I know Adil Allah, he just uh, raised his hand, but thank you so much, uh, Dr. Khan. Uh, this was a very comprehensive, detailed presentation, and I know that a lot of like effort and time would have gone into it, so we really appreciate your time and effort for that. Uh, you took a really good deep dive into the topic of supplemental applications. So now what we'll do is we'll have our panelists offer their comments before we uh, move on to the section of like question and answers. Dr. Uh, Khan, if you stop sharing your screen, we'll have like, a, we'll have uh, the illusion of intimacy because the boxes will become bigger. Perfect. Okay, um, so let's do this. We, we can start with Dr. Hamid and, um, or if panelists want to go in a different order, that's okay as well, but we can, we can have an order where we go with Dr. Hamid and then Dr. Ashraf, then Dr. Naveed, and then we can um, get comments from Dr. Rehan as well. Does that order work for everyone? Okay, perfect. That's how you folks are appearing on my screen. So Dr. Hamid, take it away. Um, thank you very much, uh, Minal. Okay. <clears throat> this is a new process for all of us. And again, as Dr. Asif uh, Khan uh, eloquently um, talked about the whole process, um, it's still in development. And again, uh, you have the opportunity to participate it and not participate it. But at the end of the day, you, you need to do what's best for you. And I think signaling, as uh, Asif mentioned, does not mean that there would be a guarantee for an interview. It's just the start of the process. So you need to be strategically very mindful of how you do it and which programs are there. It's an, also an opportunity to sh showcase yourself uh, and tell your story, uh, why you're interested in psychiatry or a certain program. So please take advantage of it. Uh, I think we would have a better, uh, um, a, a better uh, uh, input when we do this next year, because we would have data that we would have collected as we, we have gone through the process, um, I don't know whether it would be at the end of the day as valuable as we think it is, or it might be more valuable. Because again, uh, as we go through this season, uh, there is limitation in information that would be provided to the programs in, uh, uh, when it comes to your scoring. Step one would be pass fail. Step two might be missing. So again, the, the supplemental application does have a value. So let's see how the season goes. Um, but again, it's an opportunity to, to shine and uh, to show the programs who you are as an individual other than the scores which might or might not be there. Thank you so much, Dr. Hamid. That was really valuable advice. Dr. Ashraf. Go for it. Okay, well, uh, good morning to the ones in the US and good evening to the ones in Pakistan. Um, uh, first of all, well, thanks for inviting me to this um, uh, great webinar. Dr. Asif Khan, as Dr. Hamid said, he has covered almost everything. That was a really good comprehensive uh, presentation. Really good for me too. I learned a lot of things, um, even as a program director. So yeah, that was great. So what I, I would say, how do you approach it? Again, a new process, everybody's learning, uh, but look at it. Um, so the issues we have had in the past is um, you got three or four spots in the smaller programs and you have 800, 900 applications, right? And most of the programs are using filters to filter out those applications. So when you filter out applications, people who may otherwise would be really good, but they had some situation that they either could not uh, fall into that category of three year or five year of graduation, which is a, one of the common filters in most of the programs, or their scores were low because they had some situation, family situation, they, they couldn't uh, prep for the exam properly. So now those people will be filtered out. And, and you're great, but your application would not be looked at. Now you have an opportunity, you use the signaling pathway and you highlight your meaningful uh, experiences. And then if you had adversity, you've got the impactful section, section to talk about that. So this is your opportunity to use it. So I would approach it like, um, it's like a dating app, right? So you are trying to signal programs, hey, I'm interested in you. This is who I am. 
do you want to take me out for a dinner date, which is your interview, basically? So if the program is interested, they'll say, okay, let's meet for a date. And, 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 and that's how it goes. So this is your opportunity to use it. You use it wisely and pick your programs that you want to be. And definitely if someone signals me and say they're really interested in my program and, and I happen to be in rural setting. So if someone is interested in coming to this setting and they have some sort of bond that they want to hear, definitely I'll be looking at that application. So that's how I would say approach um, this process. Thank you. Ashraf, for your valuable tip, this is another perspective, I would say. <laughs> so I would like to invite now Dr. Uh, Sadiq Naveed uh, to please uh, comment on this very hot so, topic. So thank you for inviting me. And I think uh, Dr. Asaf Khan did a pretty comprehensive um, um, presentation. I will just add some practical tips into that. And I'm not completely PD yet, so I can also see things from applica applicants' perspective. I, I, there was one question. So uh, August 1st is the time when ERA's supplemental application opens. So it should be open. If you have AMC ERA's token of, a bot, it should be on your pro profile. September 15th, I think it's 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It should be uh, is the last time when you can register for ERA's token and be for supplemental application to be open. September 16th, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is the time when supplemental application will close. ERA's application will close at September 28th. So remember, supplemental application will close before uh, ERA's ap regular application will close. I'm, I'm just going to talk a bit about from data perspective. So most of the data that we have from is from internal medicine and ER. Uh, so jury is still out and it's just one match happened. Not a lot of programs may have opted for that. So I would just suggest all of you to participate in supplemental application because a lot of are, are you going to be doing. If I were to separate, you know, ERA supplemental application in two components, one would be signaling, another would be past experiences. In signaling, ge the, uh, geographical preferences, um, uh, setting preference and preference signaling. For geographical preferences, if you're IMG, you really don't need to signal um, uh, the geographical area because if you have flown thousands of miles away, you don't, you, you know, mo most of us don't worry about living in California versus New York. Um, there are some situations where you can certainly pick for geographical preference. One of that can be family situation if your spouse is living in certain area in those situations. But if you don't have any geographical preference, then don't pick for one. Um, and you can, like Dr. Asif was saying, you can um, pick up to three uh, geographical subdivisions. If you are a really good candidate, let's say 250 plus course and you know, overall really good resume, and you want to pick for... Um, pick for, you know, a geographical preference is up to you. But if you are not really limited by geographical area, I would suggest not to use that. Same goes for setting preference. Now for preference signaling, you know, for, for psychiatry, you're going to get five signals. I will suggest you picking rough, roughly about, 10, you know, 80 to 85% sort of match your uh, profile with the programs. So don't pick if you are sort of, you know, um, if your credentials are not ex really excellent, you don't need to pick for Yale and Harvard for five signals. You don't use them for really Ivy League. So I would just suggest for 80 to 85%, just pick where your profile matches with the program uh, criteria. And for 10 to 15%, you can pick where you really want to be. So that's how you, you would choose your preference. I would suggest using preference signaling. Another thing, some candidates may apply in one more than one specialty. So let's say if you're applying for psychiatry and internal medicine, you will get five preference signaling for psychiatry and for seven for IM. So it doesn't mean that, you know, having two will subtract it. So it is specialty dependent. Uh, when it comes to past experiences, I, I think Dr. Uh, Khan did a really good job. You can list up to five um, uh, past, meaningful past experiences and impactful experience. So I just wanted to add that data shows at this time. And again, you know, jury is still out. We don't know a lot about this and we don't know it from psychiatry perspective. 
only thing that is matters at this time is the is the preference signaling. Rest really has not created a dent. And when it comes to pre preference signaling based on pro program director survey, it gets your application reviewed, but it does not mean that you will definitely get an interview from that place that you signal. So just be aware of that. For past experiences, if you look at the data, you know, PDs feel that 85% have either put enough information or more than enough information. So only 15% of uh, uh, people need to sort of, you know, up uh, or add more info. The rest of them really, really need to tailor it. Um, and it's three under characters. So be really mindful of what you're putting in there because um, I don't know about other people, but if I would be interviewing, I'm going to be asking questions, you know, based on what goes on your meaningful and impactful experiences. So I will stop here uh, and happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much, Dr. Navid, uh, for all these tips. And uh, uh, you have answered almost 30% of questions <laughs> with, your, with your comments. Uh, so now I would like to invite Dr. Ahmed Khan uh, for his comments. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone from US, uh, and good evening or good night in Pakistan. Um, again, I don't think that I need to say much because Dr. Asif Khan, uh, Dr. Ahmed Hamid, Dr. Sadiq Nabi, Dr. Noman, uh, they have explained it pretty well. Uh, I guess Dr. Asif Khan's presentation was comprehensive. It covered all the points. It's a new thing, and he has that advantage of the same last name as me so that makes a lot of difference we have another so we have we are three dr khans here so yeah i, I think that uh, i what i will say is the geogra geographical preference it can be a great tool uh, i did my residency in university of north dakota school of medicine i uh, had some interaction with programs in minnesota wisconsin so if you have strong local ties those sort of programs, especially in the upper Midwest, they actually care about it a lot. Uh, the best thing would be to be honest and genuine. You cannot say that your strong local ties in Fargo, North Dakota is the TV show Fargo, or you cannot say that the only local tie you have with Minneapolis or Minnesota is MMPI2. So you need to be genuine about these things, but it is like if you if you can hit the nail, it can be very beneficial. Like you have a cousin or significant other working there or a very close friend who can actually watch for you. So these things can be very important. So I think in, in, in many ways, signaling, it's a new thing, but it, it can be very helpful, especially for those people whose, uh, whose applications might have been filtered out. So now when you, once you signal, they, they would actually review your application uh and it, it gives you a fair chance so it becomes very important so yeah so use that geographical location thing wisely it can be very very helpful okay all right i will stop here and if again any questions we would be happy to ask thank you Perfect. Thank you so much for your valuable comments, everyone. Um, we have three hands that are raised, but before we jump into it, uh, just a kind of uh, getting the gist from the messages. I have a couple of questions and I would want our panelists and our presenter to take them away. One of the uh, things that people have been asking, what's the difference between meaningful experiences and impactful experiences? And if we can use... so. What I'm understanding, there are other impactful experiences that go under the section of adversity, but for meaningful or other meaningful, like the meaningful experiences that are to be tied with, I think, clinical staff, does it have to be clinical staff or, the, uh, or medical school staff, or can it be outside of, like, can someone talk about their experience on a foot, on, uh, as the captain of a soccer team and talk about how that was meaningful and how that is going to contribute to them being leader, a leader and then a team player? It can be clinical, it can be non-clinical when it comes to the meaningful experiences as well. And uh, I'll just take a liberty to share uh, very quickly is this is uh, taken from the AAMC and this is how um, they're trying to tell us. So let's see that from here. Yeah. So if your experiences are listed in your application, you know, 
with the same experience with it could be the clinical, it could be the non uh, kind of um, clinical, or it could be any meaningful experiences that she did. Perfect. Perfect. That's very helpful. Okay. And the other question, just before we move on to the other folks, it, does does anyone want to add to it, or are we are we satiated with the answer? So you, uh, uh, Dr. Khan, you add, you asked about both meaningful and uh, impactful, right? Yes. Yeah. So so the main difference the applicants need to know impactful is transformational experience, some sort of hardship you went through, right? So for us. Uh, most of the IMGs, they came from outside the U.S. So I'm sure you have your stories and, and try to use those stories. You have 750 words in the impactful session, uh, section and, and try to talk about whether you went through financial hardships or it was hard um, to uh, take exams or that you had visa processing issue, whatever, but how you uh, talk about it and, and, and how, how you overcame that adversity and how it transformed you, that is what they're looking for in the impactful. Meaningful is that's open. You volunteered somewhere, suppose psychiatry, you volunteered uh, in, in a shelter or a crisis center and uh, how you connect with the patient, how it improve your altruism, how it improve your empathic skills, how it improve your listening skills. Think about the specialty you're applying to. What are the main characteristics that program director is looking for in that specialty? So for psychiatry, it's gonna be rapport building, which has the interpersonal communication skills, that has your listening skills. Um, and and um, and then all, all specialties are going to look for your organizational skills, your leadership skills. So as Dr. Khan was saying, uh, if you were um, uh, like the captain of a soccer team or leader, you can talk about the um, you are a team player, uh, how you handle stress, how you handle conflict resolution uh, in during that time. All those things are important. But just over there uh, in meaningful, you are limited to 350 words. Right, and the other things too, like research, training experiences, anything that you think it's going to be useful uh, for the program to pick you and uh, sort of separate you from the other people and kind of gives uh, an impression of you, your personality, and also what you bring to the table for the program. So keep that in mind and then come up with those experiences. Perfect, super helpful. No, I, I still, I, I just want to clarify more. So, uh, you are saying that meaningful can be clinical or non-clinical, anything. But what about impactful? So the impactful cannot be clinical. So for, for impactful, you know, they, those are, uh, uh, as I understood, is and if uh, Dr. Asif Khan has the slide, he can uh, pull it up. Uh, that talks about like financial hardships, that talks about family hardships. So you were the first generation per person who became the doctor in your family. So see family background, financial background, you went through something um, uh, that you did not have the financial support and how you overcame that. The community setting where you are from, if you are from a rural town where uh, people did not have access to, uh, to healthcare and that's how you got inspired and how you came out of that small town and now you're in the US and applying for the residency. Um, your educational experiences where um, sort of the, uh, you worked as a mentor, you worked as, a, as, as an advisor, you had some sort of a loss in the family. So that, those are the examples they give you. So it doesn't talk about like the other clinical work which goes into the meaningful experience. Now, we, as uh, Dr. Hamid said initially, we would learn more this year. There's a new process. But if you take this guideline, keep these examples in front of you. And in fact, well, I would probably go to a transformational experience, which is probably a hardship type experience that transformed you. And I see Dr. Hamid and Dr. Uh, Sadiq Naveed have their hands raised. So Dr. Hamid, take it away. Um, quickly, um, they, um, for, for all of you, what the programs are looking for is a story that makes sense and it's pointed pointing towards psychiatry. So you need to make sure that there is justification why your application or why your story is better than the next person's story. So at least you can be invited for the interview. And then once you come in, you can explain. We can go into the micros a lot. And again, don't try to get lost in the micros. Try to look at the bigger picture. The programs will not have the ability to read in detail and chew up everything and understand everything for 1,000, 1,200, 1,300 applications. So again, it needs to make sense and it needs to be pointing towards your objective. And it, it, it should be slightly different and a little more interesting 
than the next application. So I will just add to that. I, I think if, when it comes to ERA's application or ERA's supplemental ac application, when it comes to, you know, we focus too mu much on logistics and the, and the packaging. We, we don't worry about the content and meat. It's actually the content and meat that matters a lot. So if, and these are just examples of it. So if there is a clinical experience that's impactful for you, that's an adverse experience. If you had a significant failure in, 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 in your medical education, let's say, or training experience, please mention it and then be ready to talk about it. So, uh, so I, I think, you know, a lot of, when we focus on, you know, these applications out of anxiety, we focus on packaging, focus more on content and meat and what goes on in there and how authentic you can be while you're talking about that. And that's super helpful. That is super helpful. One quick question before we jump on to the candidates, and I would ask um, Dr. Ryan to um, turn off the recording once we jump on uh, jump onto the applicants. But um, the other question that I had was about uh, setting preference and signaling, um, because this question also co came up in the comment section. For example, if someone is setting, um, if, if someone is doing a geographical preference and they say, "I am geographically interested in Pacific," and then they apply, they signal five programs from the uh, Pacific, but they don't signal the other, for example, they signal UCLA, they signal uh, Stanford, they signal CSF, okay. they signal UW and um, Oregon, but they don't signal all the other programs like Riverside and uh, Charles Drew and other programs in California. Would that, would that geographical setting and not sig pairing it with signaling or following it up with signaling hurt the pro like hurt the people or it won't. And the other part of that question is question is that if someone does not set, uh, if someone sets a geographical preference, sorry, if yeah, if someone sets a geographical preference and does not, for example, does not set it for Pacific, will Pacific know that they haven't been set as a geographic because it's it's not saying that I don't have a preference. It's just it's not coming up as a preference for the Pacific. So Pacific has a way of knowing or it doesn't have a way of knowing. If those questions make sense. Asif, I think you should go first because yeah. I my understanding I don't want. Uh, I think you should go first and then I I can chime in because it's a logistical question. Who knows and who does not know when you signal and when you don't signal. And I think you talked about it, but I think it just needs a refresher of who knows. Yes. No, correct? Thanks. That's yes. the question, Manal, correct? Yes, yes. And I think this is definitely a question that even I kind of anticipated. <laughs> so it's a good and very intelligent thinking there. Um, you, you know, you had two questions. You may have to refresh my, my memory, but you mentioned signaling in a geographical location preference. So let's say you choose a geographical preference area and they have, you know, five states or 10 states and they have 50 programs. It's a common sense, all the program through our associations of experts, which, you know, which kind of guide us throughout this season and throughout like a lot of other like educational activities it's a common sense that we would know out of 50 programs, five would have received a signal. So the person has a preference, they may have signal, let's say on the East Coast, they have signaled um, Columbia, John Hopkins, uh, Yale, right? And then there are like 60 or 70 programs. If you talk about New York, New Jersey, Washington, DC, every, every program knows that, right? Uh, but they will be able to tolerate that data because program knows the signaling can actually, the preferences can actually change. The AAMC is very clear in instructing the program that the preferences, whether it's the geographical versus it's the signaling may change during the interview experience. A person who has signaled program A, you know, let's see he is meeting all the requirements. Yeah, it's a good fit. Is someone for it? Being invited for interview and may choose, the applicant may choose, hey, yeah, it looks good, but you know, I like the others better. The, the, the like applicants and the students signaling and preference may change throughout the interview. And this is why the AAMC and the 
like kind of like the institutional bodies, they clearly instruct the program to use this data for screening and reviewing the application only. To not, you know, uh, uh, put a lot of emphasis once the person is on the table for the interview, because you all know that a lot of other factors then come into play again. Practically, the logistics of it, we will find out, right? And it's a lot of programs applying, a lot of programs participating. It will be a very interesting data. I have already my preconceived notions about it, <laughs> the whole process, but you know, I'll keep that for the next few months uh, to see when more data is available. Does that answer your question, both of them, Manal? Okay. Yes, and now it, it, it does help, uh, yeah, and it clarifies things. Dr. Hamid, did you have wanted to say, did you want to add something? I, I think um, Dr. Naveed uh, has the hand and then I'll go. Go ahead, sir. No, no, go ahead. So uh, I, I think it was from last time, but I, I can add to what okay. the question was. Um, again, it's it's my understanding and Asif, please correct me. If if there is a regional signal signaling uh, and you apply to, I'm assuming you're not going to apply to all programs in the region, mm -hmm. but those programs where you apply and regional signaling would pick up and other programs which are out of that region would, would not be identified, correct? They would know, they would not know whether you have applied to region A, B, C, D, E, and F. So, so I think that is pretty clear. In addition, they would also not know whether you um, have chosen um, a, a region or not. So again, if they don't know, they don't know. Correct, Asif, in, in that assumption too. So, yeah. so, so if you apply to region A and you apply to programs in region A, only those programs would, would know that you have applied and this is the regional preferences. Other than that, nobody would know. And if you have not applied, skip the section or did not complete supplemental, no information is displayed. So, so that's there. Now that can be to your advantage, that can be to your disadvantage. So only time will tell how the season goes. You must understand for psychiatry, we do not have the data. Uh, let's say 1500 applications on an average or 2000 individuals apply to psychiatry in the 23 match. At the end of the match, we will have the data on how many individuals used all these signaling and how they used it. So we will see how, how, how the season goes. Uh, there might be a lot of takers. There might be very few takers. So, so let's see. So I can add to that quickly. So one way of me knowing is that if you didn't signal, if I didn't get the signal, you at least didn't signal my geographical preference. So that's one way of knowing. But one thing that we have been talking uh, frequently is to appear genuine in this application process. Um, it's okay to not signal because we, I just, you know, if you look at the program director survey, and again, that is very limited for for geographical preference preferencing and and setting preferences. It does not make or break things for you. So if you have a geographical restriction, you can do that. If you don't have it, and if you are a candidate who cannot be limited by geography, please don't do it. It's not going to hurt your chances, or it's not going to make your chances any better. So the only thing that matters right now is the preference signaling. Perfect. Yeah, this was a very important question and uh, it is clear now that there is no need to uh, signal the program, uh, the geographical signaling if you don't want to, if you are open to go anywhere. So just wanted to clarify just for the sake of simplicity, geographical preferences and signaling, two separate entities. Preference is for the zone, for free. Signaling is only five. So we all know there are 300 plus psychiatric programs. So if one candidate is applying, let's say, to 300 programs, we know only five of them will be signaled. We are completely understanding of that from the PDC perspective. Perfect. That puts, I hope that puts some anxieties to uh, bay. Thank you. Uh, so now we'll, um, uh, for, uh, Dr. Ryan, if you can uh, turn off the uh, uh, recording, that would be helpful. And we will take some questions. Adil, you have been, you have your hand raised for a while now. I'm sorry that we got to you so late, but go ahead, ask your question. Uh, 